In this video, we're talking about how to use Kramer's rule to solve a system of linear equations. And we've already talked about how to use substitution, elimination, and graphing to solve a system like this one. In this case, we're going to use Kramer's rule, which is where we find the determinants of a few matrices in order to solve for the values of x and y. Now, in the system we've been given, we have two equations, 3x plus 4y equals negative 14, and negative 2x minus 3y is equal to 11. So we have this system of linear equations, and if we want to use Kramer's rule to solve it, what we're interested in is the coefficients on each of these variables and the values over here on the right-hand side, these constant values are the solution values. So what we want to recognize is that we have coefficients on x of 3 and negative 2. So the first matrix we're going to set up is the coefficient matrix, and so we'll say d is equal to, and we're going to take the coefficients off of the x variables. So we have 3 and negative 2, and we're going to put them in the first column, just like they're stacked on top of each other here. And then we have the coefficients on the y variables, 4 and negative 3. We always have to remember to include the negative sign if there is one. So we have 4 and negative 3. And this is the coefficient matrix, and we want to find the determinant of this matrix. So remember the way that you solve a 2 by 2 matrix. You take the upper left value and you multiply it by the lower right value. So 3 times negative 3 gives us negative 9. Then we want to subtract whatever we get when we multiply lower left by upper right. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So we would say minus a negative 8, which would turn into a plus 8. So then we have negative 9 plus 8, which gives us a negative 1. Now this is the coefficient matrix, and you can think about this as the general matrix that we need to find. But now we need to do something similar. We need to find a matrix for each of the individual variables. So we'll go through this same process here, but we'll do it for the x variable. So we'll say d sub x is going to be equal to... And what we want to do is keep this coefficient matrix exactly as it is, except that because we're trying to solve for the determinant matrix for x, we want to replace the coefficients from the x variables, 3 and negative 2, with these solution values, negative 14 and 11. So in other words, we're just going to take the matrix exactly as it is, but instead of these coefficients for x, 3 and negative 2, we're going to take the solution values, negative 14 and 11, so negative 14 and 11, and then we're going to keep the rest the same, so 4 and negative 3, like this. And then we'll come back to solving this in a second, but we're going to do the same thing for y. And I oftentimes like to set up all of my matrices at once so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing. So here I want to say d sub y is going to be equal to, and again, I want to start with the coefficient matrix, but I'm replacing this y column here with the solution values negative 14 and 11. So I'm going to have negative 14 and 11, but I'm going to keep the coefficients from x, 3, and negative 2. So now I have all my matrices set up because I have the original coefficient matrix, and then I have a matrix for each of the variables, d sub x and d sub y, and now I just need to solve these. So really quickly here, we'll say negative 14 times 3 is going to give us a positive 42, and then we always subtract 11 times 4, or 44, and so we end up with negative 2. Then we'll do this one here, so we'll say 3 times 11 is 33, minus negative 2 times a negative 14 is a positive 28. So we have minus a positive 28. And then 33 minus 28 gives us a positive 5. Now from this point, solving for the values of x and y is really easy. All we want to do for x, so x is going to be equal to d sub x divided by d, so this value we found here for the matrix for x divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So we'll come back to that in a second. Similarly, y is going to be equal to d sub y divided by d. And so if we fill out these values here, we found negative 2 for d sub x, so negative 2, and we got negative 1 for d, so we have negative 1. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is a positive 2. And then for y here, we said d sub y was 5, and we said d was negative 1. 5 divided by negative 1 is a negative 5, so then we have the solution set x equals 2 and y equals 5. And of course, we could write that solution as 2, negative 5, like this. And if we want to double check ourselves, what we can do is plug these values back into the original equations and make sure that they 
are still correct. So instead of 3x here, we'll say 3 times 2, or 6. Then we have 4 times y, or 4 times negative 5, so that's a negative 20, plus a negative 20 gives us a minus 20, and that's going to be equal to negative 14. And of course, that makes sense. 6 minus 20 is a negative 14, so we have negative 14 equals negative 14, so that checks out. And then if we want to check our second equation, we have negative 2 times x, or negative 2 times 2, so that's a negative 4. Then we have minus 3 times y. Well, y is negative 5. 3 times a negative 5 is a negative 15. So we have a minus negative 15, or plus 15, equals 11. And what we see if we simplify the left-hand side is negative 4 plus 15 is 11. So we get 11 equals 11. That checks out as well. And so we've confirmed then that 2, negative 5 is a solution to this system of equations.